Young people are completely undervalued, I think, quite often in our society. People talk about youths in a disparaging way. Well, you know what? Youth is a good thing <laughs> because youth is hope and is our future. And I think that you can go very wrong underestimating the power of young people because if you get a good group of young people who really have a heartfelt sense of direction together they can move mountains so in many respects working with young people you couldn't be in a job that gave you more hope because they are phenomenal my name is sue hannam and this is the female lead when I was at school, I'd had a conversation with my mum about being a secretary, because that seemed like what you did when you were a young girl growing up in North Birmingham and going to the kind of school I went to, I suppose. And then the, the deputy head teacher at school, who was pretty feisty, fabulous woman, called my parents in and said to them, why do you want Sue to be the spanner if she can be the mechanic? Which I always thought was a <laughs> slightly odd analogy to use, um, but actually, fundamentally changed the route of my life. So I look back to Mrs Smedley, wherever she may be now, and think, you know, thank you so much because you were a strong woman who absolutely um, could see that I might have been doing less than I ought to have been doing. And I have absolute gratitude for that woman. I was the first person in my family to go to university. So I don't think the expectation was necessarily there for me to do that. I had always wanted to be a lawyer, so I got an English degree and then decided I would do a law conversion and, and realised pretty quickly that it's quite expensive to get a law conversion and frankly I hadn't got the money to do it. So I had to go and earn some money and at the time you could get funding to do a postgraduate teaching qualification, so that's what I did and the plan was that I would teach for one year and then I would go and do this law conversion. and. Of course, what happened is that I taught for a year and I really rather liked it. And then I taught for another year and then I taught for another year. And then I thought, if I don't leave now, I never will. So after three years of teaching, I did, I had to save the money to do the law conversion. And um, I did that. And then I did a training contract with a firm of solicitors and I learned all sorts of utterly invaluable things actually about myself as well as about law that come in useful in, in life in all sorts of ways. And, and one of the biggest lessons I learned was that actually for me, my heart lay in the education of children and I absolutely had to go back. The joy and the energy that you get from youngsters in a school and the ideas and the vibrancy and that sense of opportunity, it's just fantastic. Don't think because you've set off on one track that you are a single track um, pony and you're stuck because you're not. And, and I think if you're too blinkered as you go through life, it's really easy to lose sight of the opportunities that are coming perhaps left field. And that can be where the real treasures lie. I honestly think my teenage self would be really surprised by what I've done because in many respects I don't think you have necessarily that sense of self-belief at that age. It's a rare commodity and I say this particularly actually as a woman. I think that as we go through our careers and opportunities present themselves, you grow the confidence and you develop through the opportunities that come your way and you must grab them. That's what I would say to any young girl and my old self, I suppose. You know, if, if an opportunity arises, do not let it pass you by because you don't know when, when it will come back. Um, I don't think for a minute I would have dreamt that I could have achieved what I have achieved.